Thank you for joining us for today's Tech Talk about ABB's Manufacturing Operations Management Solution and how it can help you to advance to the next level of operational excellence in the chemical industry. Next slide, please. So just a little housekeeping before we get started so that you know how to participate in today's event. We have taken a screenshot of an example of the attendee interface and you should see something that looks like this on your own computer desktop. The control panel hides automatically when not in use. So move your cursor to bring it back. You have the opportunity to submit text questions to today's presenters by typing your question into the Q&A box of your attendee interface. You may send in your question at any time during the presentation, which will last approximately 30 to 35 minutes. We will collect these and address them at the end of the presentation during a hopefully very lively Q&A session. If you cannot locate the Q&A in your meeting controls, then click on the controls button with the three dots, then click on Q&A. This adds the Q&A box so that you can type in your question. A reminder that all attendees are in mute mode and today's presentation is being recorded and will be soon available on the IBB IAEN Tech Talk web page for your reference. Next page, please. So uh, we have to mention that life is dynamic and errors are human. So this disclaimer is to remind you that there could be errors in the document and thus IBB can't be held liable to this document. Thank you. Next slide, please. So um, today we are presenting ABB Ability Manufacturing Operations Management, focusing the chemical industry. And our presenters today are Matilda Steiner, Global Product Manager, Manufacturing Operations Management, Federico Masto Pieto, Digital Solutions Architect for MOM Solutions, where MOM is short for Manufacturing Operations Management, obviously. Myself, as a regional digital lead for Central and Southern Europe, I have the pleasure to host today's session. Through this session today, you will learn how ABB can help to optimize your production process. You will hear about data to be supercharging, continuous improvements, how to empower knowledge worker, and something about connectivity and, interoperable, and interoperability, sorry for that, to synchronize, optimize, and orchestrate the whole process. Um, the use cases presented thereafter are taken from a paint production and a nutritional ingredients production. Um, so next slide, please. Safety is our um, first priority and um, please always obey your local safety rules. This applies especially when attending this tech talk, driving a car. But even though some of you are listening from home office and are familiar with the surroundings, watch your environment and have escape routes clear. Also in these days, please obey local Corona rules and keep social distancing to fight the spread of the virus. Next slide, please. Uh, with no much further ado, let's jump into the topic. Digitalization in the chemical industry is not so different to other production industries. Interesting points here is where we are coming from and what sets leaders apart. So coming to the next slide here, um, there is a vast of 80% of the manufacturing companies applying digital operations, according to a recent Boston Consulting Group survey. Done right, those industries come to a 10 to 20% reduction in production and supply chain costs, as well as to 15 to 30% cut in networking capital, one of the very important KPIs to impact the EBIT. An additional 6% uptick in the incremental revenues comes on top through the enhanced productivity. So what is setting those leaders apart? According to BCG, the interesting fact that leaders are having very concrete use cases to apply digital. This sparks us to, the show, to show you two very concrete use cases to apply ABB Ability MOM. Um, one from a world leader in the paint industry and one from a world leader in nutritional ingredients. Those processes with a heavy batch component. Next slide, please. Um, but before we start that, where are the potential driving uh, the production to a higher efficiency? Challenges of today's chemical industry are not so far away from other industries. Basically running the process on paper is still common and the big source of inefficiencies. 
higher than needed inventory, which has a direct impact on the networking capital and cost basis, lack of information, which hinders continuous improvement strategies of Six Sigma and others, inconsistent execution, which leads to a lower than expected quality, out of spec material and waste, and the high cost to fulfill regulatory compliance. Waiting time impacting release cycles and the book to bill ability. So I'm happy to turn it over now to our first presenter, Matilda. And I guess you have quite some answers to these typical scenarios, Matilda. Thank you, Gero. Yes, I will do my best. And um, a warm welcome to this session also from my side. So frequently when we spoke to, uh, speak to our customers, about supporting them in digitalization of their operations we are talking about smart operations and in essence smart operations is about doing more with less so by leveraging technology people and assets to to its best so it's similar to when you ask your teenage son or daughter what smart means for them it's also about doing as little as possible but getting it done and what I will show today is how these smart operations is the foundations for ABB's manufacturing operations management suite, and we condense it into these three core areas. So also what Gero mentioned at the beginning here. Number one is to provide data to really supercharge continuous improvement and responsiveness. And this is done by collecting the data and putting it into the context to serve the different operational disciplines that we see in the operations. Typically, this is related to production, quality, inventory, and maintenance. And what we will also see, it's a combination of IT and OT data. So this is this uh, convergence that we see also uh, looking on IT and OT. The second element is what we call the empowered knowledge worker. Here it's about leveraging technology like mobility and data so that the people can work in an effective and convenient way. So typically here we see that uh, need for step-by-step uh, -step guidance, having access to, to real-time information in, in the context of my ongoing task, um, and also seamless collaboration with my colleagues or with other functions. And then the third topic is regarding connectivity and interoperability. So basically all customers that we work with are unique in some way or another. They have different processes, they have different systems and applications and equipment. And with MOM, we support them in making the different entities work seamlessly together. And in this picture here, you see the platform of our MOM, ABB Ability Manufacturing Operations Management here in the middle, let me show you the hmm, pointer, excuse me. So in the middle here, you see our ABB Ability Manufacturing Operations Management Suite, which is on one hand connected to the ERP system or the level four applications that is ERPs, but it can be also CMMS and PLM systems, which are enterprise type of applications. And then on the other side here, we have connectivity to the shop floor, which can be PLC, SCADA, or DCS. And here, of course, we like if it's our, connect, uh, our automation, but we are also agnostic here. It can also be third-party automation system that we connect to. And then starting off with this dark gray area here, these are the platform or common services. Um, which consist of connectivity, so the connectivity components both to the down here and up to the level four to the control uh, uh, business systems. We have data storage, which is both related to time series process data as well as transactional data related to materials, lots, and orders. We have common services uh, that can be used of all the applications related to authentication, native language supports, and standard things that would be relevant across the whole suite. Then we have the UX. There's a great um, push for having superb UX for the operators and the users of the, of the software, and here to have a seamless uh, way to look at it with our HTML5 web client that goes also across the dif these different applications. 
and then we have reporting capabilities also again that we can link up information and data that we collect across these applications and across data sources. Now the actual applications that we will look at today are in these red boxes here and they have each a heading that explains a little bit what it's about. So we have the process intelligence apps which are basically there to collect and, and analyzing and visualizing process related time series data. So we have a dashboard here, we have um, Excel Analyze and um, Alarm and Event applications. Then we have the Manufacturing Execution and this is about uh, apps and modules that are there to streamline the production execution. So by management of workflows, operator guidance, production tracking. Then we have the apps related to production intelligence and here it's about contextualized operational data. So here we have uh, apps like overall equipment efficiency, uh, statistical process, co process control, and also advanced batch applications. And then finally, we have application related production optimization. And here, in addition to, to what we have on the left hand side, we are leveraging advanced optimization algorithms to optimize and improve uh, specific areas. And there you will also see from Federico, some example of optimizations that were done in, in this paint application that we had. And now I will take you on a vertical tour of a plant to show a little more in, in practical terms how MOM can support operational excellence and the different stakeholders. And I will do that in this tour by showing first how orders are downloaded from the ERP system and uh, how the underlying workflow looks and the different uh, uh, way how it can support the operators in, in the guiding them to have this streamlined, streamlined uh, process and also how MOM can support tracking of the inventory and examples of operations performance tracking. So let's start with the first step here how we can get the connectivity to the ERP system. As Gero also mentioned at the beginning, very frequently still we see in, in, in many operations that there is a disconnect between the ERP, which in frequently with our customers are, is SIP, uh, and weekly or daily production plants are either printed or you have an Excel sheet where it's shown. And then at the end of a shift, the, the shift leader or somebody else enters in, in the ERP system how much was produced and consumed. So basically, if, if you're unlucky, you have a, a disconnect of eight hours where you are not really up to date of what has been produced and consumed in your operations. So in this view here, you see how, how this is solved in MOM. On the one hand here on the left hand side, you see the plant hierarchy. So here you can model your effective um, plant, how it looks in the different areas and lines. And in this case here, we have a process area, two batch areas with the different reactors. We have raw material area, preparation area and storage areas. So here I can navigate to see what's going on in each of these process areas. And then here in the middle, I have my downloaded orders. So instead of having it in an, in an Excel or in a printed sheet, I have it always up to date. This is also a frequent issue. If I have something printed and it's three hours old, I might have changes that are not reflected. So, and then in addition to the orders, I have it also the batches. So this order here consists of two batches and I can see the actual operations also below here. Um, the same information, but in, a, in another view, you see here, so here I have the list view of my process orders. So I have the status plan started and ongoing, and I can also use different uh, filtering and sorting. So that was the first view typically for, for a supervisor. Then we have the next one, which is the underlying um, workflow. So this is, um, allows the, the complete modeling of a production flow. 
So I can see here the, the different steps and for each of these steps I can then also model uh, specification of material, equipment and specific resources that I need to have available for this step and also how it should, uh, should transition to the next. Um, and again, that, mm -hmm, shoot. That looks quite interesting uh, to me, um, uh, Matilda, uh, and it looks very much like a large batch of workflow system. How does it cooperate in position with the ABB batch management systems from uh, 800XA, Freelance, or uh, or Symphony Plus? Ah, good point, Piquero. That is something that uh, is very relevant for the chemical operations. And you can see the MES workflow here as the more meta uh, level. So typically, mm -hmm. we have a combination of some manual steps and then some automatic steps. And what you have in the MES workflow here are the combination of automatic. So the workflow here will have communication to the underlying uh, 800XA batch, for instance. Excellent. Okay, very good. Mm -hmm. Thanks. So Thanks this is a typical use case, so good point there. Um, and what you also have, and this is now for the process engineer who defines these uh, workflows, that you also have templates here, so I can build my process segments that I reuse uh, for, for further reference. Yes, and then if we take a look at how the workflow would look for a user, this is what we call the electronic work instruction or standard operating procedures. So here now is how these steps would be presented to an operator, an example. So on one hand here, we have on the left hand side, the step-by-step -step guidance. So I have a description of what should be done and a confirmation that should be given. And in addition to that, I can introduce supporting visuals. It can be pictures, icons, videos, or PNID, et cetera that could be of relevance for the operators when they uh, perform these tasks. And then in addition, if we have some manual uh, material handling, uh, we will see some examples of that also. If we have speciality cam, there is frequently that we have some micro dosing of, of material that need to be manually dosed and pre-weighed. And here we can then also present the operators with the material that should be dosed or prepared and introduce uh, barcode scanning to make sure that we are picking the right material and introducing the right amounts. And then, uh, in addition, in the workflow I showed before, I can introduce in-process in process quality checks. And these can be either topics that should be manually checked and entered or something that is automatically uh, coming from a connected system. And if something is out of, out of specification, I want to be able to, to log it, I want to be able to see the root cause, and I want to be able to define what should happen to this batch. And this is why we have the concept of non-conformance reporting. So the operator is presented with a drop-down list to, to define the reason, they can give comment, uh, they can upload a document or take a photo. And the bottom line is here that I want to make sure that if a batch should become rework or if I have to um, tag it as waste, that this is documented digitally. And of course, if I keep this information, it also serves the purpose of continuous improvement. I collect the non-conformances and the root cause, and then that is an input for learning. Then, Gehr also mentioned it, one big driver of cost is inventories in, in the chemical operations. So on one hand, we want to keep the, the inventories as low as possible, if you're a financial controller. If you're operations responsible, you, however, feel more comfortable if you have enough buffers so that you don't have to have any issues having to wait for material. And the, the cure here with MYM is to have always updated uh, inventories, full transparency of where everything is to reduce any issues with material not being available or having obsolence. And this is done by keeping track on all the instances of material that you have. And typically we see the concept of tote bins or containers where you have um, intermediates or finished goods. So here we have um, 
a module in the MRM that keeps track of this, um, both the material itself, but also of these um, entities where you keep the material in. Because containers have parameters that you keep, need to keep track on also in terms of the location, uh, cleaning levels and compatibility. We also have a possibility to define uh, silos and tanks. And again here, you would have in the ERP system, in SAP and others, how much have been purchased, of course, and how much has been overall consumed. But an ERP system would not keep track on the, the lots and the amounts that you have in the different silos. So this is where the MOM comes into place, where I have real-time updates of what is available in my in my facility. And this is on the right hand side, you see an example how it would look. This is now tanks with powder material and the different colors here indicates the different lots, material lots that has been uh, filled in these um, tanks. And this serves two purposes. On one hand, I can keep track how much I have. I can keep track on mixing levels if it's required between these different uh, lots. And I can also set levels where I want refilling. So that takes me to the last, last part of the short virtual tour here, and that is about um, operations control and performance tracking. And uh, this is basically where I can use the data that I have collected during this virtual tour to make smart decisions and to improve. And I will start with the dashboard app. This is uh, an application where you can build a um, dashboard by combining the data that I have collected with these different MOM apps and the connected data sources. So it can be process related um, information or related to more transactional like uh, material or quality. So here you would be able to build a dashboard that is relevant for the different uh, stakeholders that use the, the application. So it can be quality related or production related or process related. And the idea is here also that it's self-service so that it should be easily usable for, for people in the site. Then we have the reporting app. And again, this is also about combining the data that has been collected across the MOM applications um, the, for instance, the uh, process related and uh, what do you call uh, transaction related. What we see frequently here are, of course, batch reports, uh, but it can also be uh, quality reports, packaging report, calibration reports. So things that you want to keep track on and also keep as a PDF report for, for different reasons. Then we have batch analytics uh, apps, so these are advanced batch analytics, not only reporting and dashboarding, who are there to detect and, and find process anom uh, anomalies by analyzing both process variables and process durations to find the root cause analysis and, and also be able to benchmark the different batches. Often this is re referred to as golden batch. And then we have statistical process controls and here we can define and monitor what we call SPC control cards which is nothing else than to to measure a process and make sure that if it goes beyond um, some some calculated values that you need to act and these are based on statistical standard calculations and the main reason for all of these apps is, of course, to gain new and better insights. And I want to share with you also some examples of um, how, what kind of questions can be answered and how it can be used. And this is, again, also from a chemical operations where they looked at three different topics here. One was planned versus actual batches per week. And basically what they saw was that nine days out of ten they did not produce as many batches as they planned and and the reason for this was just basic insuff uh, insufficient knowledge about what actually happened in the process so it was lead times that were not followed and the weekly plan was basically too optimistic 
And when they started to investigate, they found the main reasons you can see at the bottom here, um, they had raw material shortages. So they basically had to wait at certain parts in the process before they can continue. They had things that they could not impact like sick leaves, uh, which they did not take into consideration in this positive planning. And then they also had lack of clean tanks and containers. You saw before this, these containers because they did not have it updated. They sometimes had the issue of that they didn't have any available to actually fill things that were uh, finished. And then classical ones that are waiting for approvals, etc. So there were things that they could impact and there were things that they could not impact. But the bottom line was that continuously happy planning was not helpful for, for the operations. Uh, another example was the lead times of the pre-batching. So that was the picking of material and pre-weighing. And again here, but just by starting to measure, they could identify that they had peaks of, uh, of periods where things did not go well. They had long lead times because material was not found or uh, the, they don't, did not have up-to-date information about the in-house stock. And again, first priority was to measure to see where do we have issues and what happened here? Why were we so successful here and not here? And based on that, they could then take action, uh, actions out to improve the process. And the last example is from uh, related to quality. This is uh, from a, a paint production. So they are producing paint emulsion. And based on the quality observation, they had non-conformances related to discoloration and density. And the root cause for that was errors in dosing. So raw material bags looked very similar. So there was a risk to pick and dose the wrong material. And then some manual steps were, were forgotten uh, that caused these quality issues. So on one hand, with MYM, I can find out and see the, the trends of where I have issues. And on the other hand, by using the uh, streamlining of the process and operator guidance and QR code scanning, I can limit the risk of these kind of quality issues happening in the first place. So that was all from me. I'm handing over to Federico to show some real use cases from customers that we have worked with and implemented uh, manufacturing operations management. Good morning or good afternoon and welcome, welcome also from my side. I'm starting with the one case with Asian paint. Asian paint is the India's largest and the Asia's third largest paint company and was set in a greenfield plant in Kandala for decorative paints with production capacity up to 225,000 kiloliter per year, just for water based water-based paint, plus other, other massive production of solvent-based and other machine colorants and uh, for automotive. Uh, Asian Paint was looking for a supplier for an integrated system to drive the whole production process, to optimize the, the throughput of the plant and to guarantee a continuous growth in an environmental friendly policy. Uh, looking more in detail, uh, Asian Paints had a plan for larger and highly automated plants uh, to sustain uh, a trend of uh, 15 to 20 percent of volume growth. So they were also looking for a um, risk mitigation for the investment. Uh, and so they are seeking for a right first time approach and also the capability to manage a batch with sites larger three to five times than the legacy plants. Another need, uh, need was a standardization of work practices uh, due to this uh, improvement and dimension of the plants to guarantee the operator's flexibility and rotation of the shop floor. Uh, ABB, to fulfill all these requirements, uh, proposed ABB Ability MOM for a full ERP to shop floor connectivity. Uh, the system guaranteed a seamless uh, online integration of data to and from ERP. Uh, with a robust and scalable reporting mechanism. And in this case, the uh, ERP was uh, SAP. Uh, ABB, uh, ability also um, provided complete uh, manufacturing operation management, uh, able to handle all the exception on this kind of production, uh, supporting uh, batching software for various multiple PSC vendors already, already in place. 
more specifically, uh, the workflow management uh, and supporting Asian Paint, uh, support Asian Paint in planning and automated scheduling, uh, based on various uh, resources and constraints, and also optimizing the usage of shared resources across the various recipe to reduce as much as possible the adult time and increasing the throughput. Next slide, please. And now we're going a little more in, in detail on the on the on the on the solution you can see here uh, on the screen a simplified draft of the data flow just to to show how it works and uh, as, as as mentioned at the uh, all data coming from sap down to the uh, mom and then sent to the various asset control systems in the in the plant uh, one of the key features of this uh, solution was the dynamic batch concept so traditionally, in a batch system, uh, any slight modification in recipe means creating a new master recipe in the batch system. In this case, the production process is running based on parameters uh, provided directly from SAP uh, on the control system, and only one master recipe can handle all the products for the specific particular equipment. Uh, for instance, a uh, twin shop dispenser, which is um, largely used in, in paint production. Uh, this, of course, requires a better reliable and robust integration with the ERP system and continuous connection, but ABB can guarantee this thanks to a wide experience in vertical integration. Uh, you can see in the, in, the, in the draft, the production order downloaded from SAP automatically creates a control recipe, then, and then are directly released to production. In this case, any new version release of the recipe, and like for instance, for substitution of material or different process timings on any modification in the slide modification process, and nothing needs to be modified in the workflow management and in DCS. So existing master recipe will uh, be able to handle all the variations. And so with no need for a new master recipe, there are also less chances of error in the, in the short floor. Uh, thanks to this direct connection with ERP, all material consumption, phases, confirmation, uh, good recipe, and other information are online, and so they are immediately sent to the to SAP as the best progresses in production. So SAP is aware of uh, each stage of the production, and, and this enables the view of the latest inventory and stocks, and can lead also to a better planning and also a, a smart and lean uh, supply chain management. Uh, on the right side, you can see another another type of optimization uh, we provided uh, with this kind of plant. Uh, the optimization to the shared resources, because we have several shared resources like uh, wake operas, picking lines, or batching tanks. Uh, the optimization is performed uh, across the various recipe, recipe to reduce the time and increase the throughput. Uh, so basically, in a traditional batch system, the starting point and time of material dosing operation, which are very frequent in this kind of uh, process, uh, to fulfill the to fill the uh, the storage in intermediate storage, are usually fixed, and so there are specific start times. In this solution, we propose that a material dosing operation decoupled for the main recipe, and so they run separately as a central optimization service. In this case, the shared set of equipment. Uh, were modeled as a constraints in this optimization. And so depending on the progress of different batches, uh, with of course various uh, in the short row of operations and the various needle material, the system optimized the usage of the, uh, the shared equipment to keep the production in, uh, in, in traction and with a maximum throughput. A simple example we can provide this optimization just to, to understand is uh, uh, the optimization of peak movement. Uh, tanks are constantly updated the compatibility matrix. The tanks containing compatible material can share uh, common pipeline and also uh, so the, the pig uh, clean. And in this case, the pig movement uh, can, re, uh, can be optimized, so it can be reduced the wear and the consumption, and of course, the time of execution. Next slide, please. This second case. Uh, we're presenting a, 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 a fine chemical, uh, specialty chemical plant because DSM is a Dutch based company uh, specialized in global life science and material science co um, products. It's a leading supply for uh, specific materials, high performances for automotive, electric electronics, but also biomedical materials and, uh, and nutraceutical and food and personal care products. In this specific plant, 
uh, is the world largest uh, say plant for nutritional ingredients uh, as vitamins, carotenoids, omegas, food enzymes, and other fine chemicals for food. It's based in France. And uh, they handle over 2,000 made to order products according to specific customer specific requirements. And this requires more than 1,000 different recipes and 200 types of raw materials. This, of course, in, includes several different mixing uh, machines and, uh, and assets, uh, up to 8,000 liters uh, for, for tanks and reactors, and a wide range of blending technologies around the, around the plant. Uh, this type of product needs a specific care because, of course, it's, uh, it's good grade and the handling of sensitive materials has to be considered. Uh, previously, uh, the premix plant uh, in the first part of the, of the process used a, a tailor-made process control system, uh, which required a, a slightly sequential execution of the various process steps uh, to improve the efficiency uh, and to be prepared for the future demands. The SEM looked for a reliable and comprehensive system to support the production and to fully control the flow material and products for the complete traceability. Uh, of course, this kind of production, you can imagine, are also strict requirements in terms of documentation. Uh, to support the SM uh, on these needs, uh, ABB proposed an MES solution to ABB Ability MOM suite with the production management, audience order sequence, and check and trace for materials and also for parts. Uh, ABB delivered the full shop floor activity support uh, for instance for vegan dispense or so recipe adjustment based on chemical analysis and lab analysis. The system, of course, uh, for the full integration from RP, the SCADA system, and the production equipment with several scales connected to OPC. Next slide, please. Okay, analyzing more in detail uh, the production in Villeneuve, uh, we have to say that the shipments must leave the compound within a maximum of four weeks after the order reception, including the time to deliver necessary documentation analysis. And these requirements stand and will stand for any future product specification or tightening of documentation, like for instance, uh, for safety or traceability. So this needs to be uh, ready for any future modification, required a strong uh, investment to um, gain flexibility in the, in, the, in the present productions. So it's clear that to achieve and guarantee uh, this, uh, uh, this flexibility, the SM and BB work together uh, for a new adaptable solution to, uh, to bring flexibility to the, to the production. What changes is that uh, uh, some step of the production can be performed in parallel rather than in, uh, in, uh, in series like in before. And uh, in for, just to give you an example shown here in the, in, the, in the picture, all raw materials required for the production uh, lead once was needed uh, available on site at the same time for the uh, for the production to begin. Now, the weighing and portioning can be begin as soon as the first component is materially available. Uh, we are waiting for the complete set to be ready. This massively increases the flexibility of the scheduling and uh, also the, the, the waiting station, the sharing of waiting station. And so this alleviates the, and, uh, the, the bottlenecks in the production. Uh, of course, this kind of solution integrated give also better visibility. Because you know, it's often said that the, the knowledge is the power. And for a manufacturer, it's definitely the key to uh, to unlock a, a better efficiency uh, with the, uh, all the asset optimization and provide the proper uh, traceability and and transparency. With a new new solution, DSM now has a real time information about the entire process, and uh, so uh, it can be also more reliable and transparent. They know at any time how much of what material and which specific step is it. Uh, this, uh, of course, unlocks uh, a detailed planning process with a much reduced demand for storage and raw materials, which is also a reduction of, uh, of cost and a better to put time. Uh, in addition for, uh, say, say, to a detailed process planning, uh, there's also a reduction of, of errors with this kind of, of, uh, of management. Uh, ABB, uh, the solution, of course, uh, allows a full material traceability and genealogy. And so uh, the system can be used also as base for a specific requirements of documentation to prove uh, the, uh, the production, the production space on the production quality. Uh, this was a complete, uh, say, uh, 
analysis made by ABB and the SAM to gain this uh, this uh, this solution and these advantages. So uh, okay, we can say that the overall gain, uh, efficiency gain by the complete uh, revision of the process with the new system is uh, exceeding largely the double digit because it's uh, really boosting up the, the performance of the plant. So thank you, Federico, for showing us these two examples. I will just summarize a little bit what we have talked about today. And uh, what we mentioned at the beginning is that smart operations is about supercharging data empowerment and getting the operators working as good as possible in an efficient and convenient way. And here you see some aspects listed that we have touched on. So we want to go from this manual paper-driven process to have an integrated uh, system that can guide operators where we have SOPs available in the context in a tablet or in a mobile phone or in a, in a computer so that they can work in a efficient way. We want to make sure that we have uh, inventories always tracked uh, up to date so that we don't have to have uh, obsolete uh, inventory or high inventory, it's a significant cost uh, uh, element in the operations. So we want to be more uh, lean here. We want to make sure that we have the information that is uh, required for timely decisions. We see examples in, in processes where we have to have some approval of, of batches, that this is something that increases the lead times. If we can speed up these decisions, that is something that is um, make it faster our process and we can capture the the what we sell faster. And then we want to have effective and reliable order and execution. That means that we want to have it executed in the same way every time, independent on who is working on the process. We want it streamlined to to work in the same way. And then we want to avoid waiting times. It can be waiting for material, waiting for equipment, or waiting for decisions. So these are the topics that we, we talk about when we see, say, smart operations and what we can leverage by vertical and horizontal integration of the different entities in the process.